Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. So I've actually been down in the garden <clears throat> this morning for a while. I just came to grab the camera and get a cup of coffee and some more water. And I figured I would take you guys back down there. Oh no, coffee is not for kitties, Toast. <laughs> All right, let's go garden. Hello, Will. Howdy. Don't show your audience my troll feet. <laughs> <laughs> Looky there. Happy birthday, little cow pee. So Will pulled in this morning and I was just standing here in the middle of this garden staring at it, trying to figure out how I wanted to lay everything out. So he came through here. How long ago did you sow these cow peas? It's like less than a week, right? I think I sowed them last Friday. Last Friday? So yeah, that's less than a week, six days. And they're starting to germinate, which is nice. But <clears throat> he did about one every three feet because he wasn't sure how interspersed we were gonna do it. And actually what we're doing now is going through and adding in some more cow peas and some sunflowers in between them. So when you're growing things, when you're growing anything, this applies, but specifically on something like a sunflower, if you're wanting to grow sunflowers, for cutting, like you wanna cut the heads and put them in a vase on your counter. You wanna sew those pretty closely together uh, so that they don't get huge. <clears throat> Obviously variety is gonna play into this, but even with large sunflowers sewn closely together, they're not gonna get as big as they could if they had a whole lot of space. It's kind of the same thing with a lot of things uh, in the garden, with things like salad greens, for instance. Sew them closer together, harvest them younger, versus letting them space out and come to a head, to have like a head of lettuce versus baby greens. Um, sunflowers are kind of like that. Like when the heads first open, um, they're not as big, especially if they're close together. Out here, we're doing sporadic sunflowers flowers throughout the cow peas and those we will not cut we're just going to leave those alone let them develop seeds usually when we let our sunflowers develop seeds we use those to offset chicken feed costs we end up throwing them to the chickens or to the pigs but here they're also going to serve the purpose of being something that the cow peas can climb on all right so i'm going to give you guys the overview of how we're doing this and then i'm going to get to work so we tilled this area raked in some rows obviously we haven't finished raking in rows it's a very physical work they get covered with like this very thick layer of hay mulch it's gonna have some seeds in it um i i, I get i, I want to make that clear because i hear i feel like a lot of people will go get hay to mulch and then it sprouts and they're like oh my god there's weeds in my garden um there's weeds in your mulch <laughs> And that's a lot easier to get out than the native grasses growing up out of the ground. So this does serve to suppress weeds from growing out of the actual soil, uh, which are a lot harder to pull out. Thick layer of mulch, uh, which is going to cover the soil and help it be healthier. We did leave the walkways open. Um, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do on these. We may just end up letting grass grow and weed whacking them down. But what we do to plant here is we actually come and in the mulch we move it to the side like this all right until we get down to the soil press this down and around i have a bucket of compost right here so this is the alternative to mixing a lot of compost in with your tilled garden and we apply the same way of planting in the other garden spaces too now in the past i have always every single season i've laid down a couple inches of compost on top of my beds that's expensive when you start doing very large spaces because it adds up really fast and a lot of times it's just not super necessary this soil it's not terrible there is some good stuff in the native soil every year my gardens don't necessarily need two more inches of compost across the whole garden bed at every season and so what we've been doing is just amending the places where we plant instead of having to mix lots and lots of compost in this whole row i just take a scoop of compost and put it in my hole just top dress it's just on top of the soil and then i'm planting my seeds into this and then once they sprout up i'll close this mulch around them so it's just the plant sticking out i think here's a little cowpea that was sown um six days ago yeah i do want to add will just said said this which is true we did we tilled and then we let it kind of just bake in the sun for what was it like 48 hours yeah, we let it probably bake and then we rake and then we let it bake again. Yeah. So it sat out for like two two days. That way all the grass that was turned over gets 
dried up and then raked it up let that sit and then mulched it but pretty quickly i think we had this mulch down within what would you say like four days of tilling it was mulched kind of a fine line between letting the grass dry and then making sure that you have uh, something down before the grass starts growing again so there will be cowpea 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 and then we'll have a couple of sunflowers throughout here all the way down um, these are going to grow a lot they're going to cover a lot and they're going to climb those sunflowers it's going to be really cool and by just putting the scoop of compost in it's going to help retain moisture where i need my seeds to germinate fresh compost and it can hold a lot of moisture which you need for germination um, whereas if i were to try to put seed in this it's obviously real dusty and dried out from being exposed and then that compost is going to help feed that plant but that plant is also going to drive down and it's going to it's going to also thrive on the, the natural soil and later in the season we'll start spraying with worm casting teas and stuff like that to help give them further nutrition My plants are steadily hardening off. These are all of my tomatoes I started from seed. They got a little behind, but now once they're hardened off, they'll be ready to be planted. All right, I can't really see my screen at all, so I hope that this is in focus. All right, so we're getting all of those holes planted. I think Will went to eat lunch. And here we're kind of experimenting. You'll see we did like one long trench down the middle of this mounded row. If you've missed previous videos, our rows are curved because they're on contour out here in this field, which will help hold water when it rains and hopefully alleviate the need for water as well as this thick, heavy mulch should do that too. In this row, I'm going to, I'm alternating some things. About every three feet or so, I'm going to put a Seminole pumpkin um, that's native to the Everglades. Therefore, it handles heat and humidity really well so it's a good option to grow here in South Carolina. I'm really hoping that we'll show a little resistance to um, squash bugs which are our big pest. And then in between those I'm going to put a sunflower and I may throw in some cosmos. Um, cosmos in my experience are relatively shallow rooted. They reseed like crazy so they'll be volunteering themselves in this space until the end of time. I'm aware of that. I'm not mad about it like I'm okay with that. Um, the reason I am interspersing those cosmos with those pumpkins is they're fast growing and pollinators really love them. Where I live, I really don't have to worry too terribly much about pollinators, but a lot of times the reason why people grow, they'll grow some sort of squash or pumpkin or something like that, and uh, they won't get a lot of fruit because they don't have enough pollination. And if you make sure you're planting some sort of pollinator friendly flower, like a cosmos or like um, zinnias is another really good fast growing quickly blooming uh, low maintenance flower and planting those around your squash is going to bring in that pollination even more so um, so that's kind of the idea here i think it'll be pretty i think it'll make the pollinators happy and my hope is is that by adding some diversity around my squash it might also help with that pest problem i don't know if that will work or not but we're gonna try it i mean the worst case scenario is that it doesn't work and my squash die but at least there will be flowers to, to console me. <laughs> Alright, whole rows planted. 
uh, Seminole squash interspersed with Cosmos and some sunflower Steve sunflowers. I ran out of seeds about two thirds of the way down, so I switched to orange glow watermelons instead. Oh. The idea of this is that it should spill out, ramble around here, maybe over where all of these things kind of intersperse with this. We'll probably somewhat lose our walkways as the season goes on. That's okay. It'll cover the walkways and they won't grow as much grass. The sun's starting to come out. It's been really overcast and nice, but it's probably about to be a little too intense for me to work out here in it. Like I have my fresh little vase of sweet peas. <laughs> I've been refilling this cup filled with water and fresh sweet peas every few days. So when we drive around the farm, we can have this lovely car freshener. So I was heading back in for lunch and I just had to chuckle at this. Um, we moved the chickens out onto the pasture. So this pasture is just overgrazed right now because we have all the cows here and that's going to change soon as we set up the rotational grazing in the pastures next door. Um, it didn't matter so much over winter because the grass wasn't growing, but it's getting to be time that we're going to start working on that pretty soon. And anyway, we're going to be running these chickens through this field to kind of try to help restore some health to it. The cows are all up here just mooing. They stopped because I walked up. They were all just standing around mooing at the chickens. Cows are the most inquisitive creatures. Nosy, really, uh, but we'll say inquisitive for the sake of being polite. <laughs> they just have to be involved in what's going on. They have to check it out, which I mean, hey, I, if somebody moved a, a bunch of critters I'd never seen before into to my space, I would probably feel the same way. Soon, it'll just be the dairy cows out here. I guess they are maybe moving on. <laughs> hey guys, it's the next day. Uh, we finished lots of, we finished our planting yesterday. I mean, we only got half that in-ground garden planted, but I'm not in any major rush to plant it. We have such a long season that we have plenty of time. And I just edited the first half of this video and realized I hadn't finished it. My goodness, look at this. I gotta get some tomato tape out here. It is time to tie up tomatoes and look. <laughs> we have wee babies. You see, if you don't tie a tomato up and it lays down, it'll start growing upward and it'll root all along the stem. So it's really best, if you can, to tie them up as soon as they're tall enough to hit your uh, trellis. These have grown a lot just in the last few days. There's another baby. You see there? So my general rule with my supports being like 18 to 20 inches off the ground is that I pluck off the early flowers but then once they start getting tall enough to reach the support I'll let the fruit grow. So got fruit. I still have all those other tomatoes that I showed you to put in the ground so those will be a little bit further behind. But pretty good. You know, it's not feeling like just the early part of gardening season. It's starting to really thoroughly feel like garden season. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today, yesterday, and all the days that you do. I bless you. Until next time.